So we are doing the next tutorial on the PIC 10F200 series that Sergey put together. And now we are doing the line following robot. So this is pretty exciting. This has been something that's been in the works on my end very slowly for quite a while. And first of all, if you remember from the previous tutorial, I had a much uglier car and I ended up just saying, forget it. And I asked a friend, John, to print me out a new chassis and I put it together and it works so much better. I'm very, very happy about it. And John said if anybody's interested that he's willing to print for them as well. But his information is down in the description. Uh, but yes, he made this beautiful print that I put together and I was able to get the servos in and also got the ultrasonic sensor, which is not going to be in this tutorial, but the next tutorial. And unfortunately, the one thing that I did not ask him for was the holder for the IR sensor, which is crucial for what we're doing. So when I was doing my testing, I basically was just using pieces of tape and um, like clothespins and stuff like that. Not super great, but effective for what I needed. So let's get into this. So this line following robot follows many of the same principles that we learned about in the previous tutorial with the remote control robot and that we have two continuous rotation servos here that can drive these two tracks. And it's controlled by our PIC 10F200, which is on here. And a lot of these wires are just going to this, which um, if you have something that can power your system between four and five or four to six volts, that's totally fine. But um, I just leave it with this because that's easier for me anyway. So the only addition compared to the last time is we took out the Bluetooth module, which sent the signals to that, and we put on this infrared like detection um, board thingy. Yes, this is a infrared detector. So we've got one thing, this emits an infrared beam right there, and then this detects it. And so if I'm this far away, it usually can't detect anything, but when it comes up this close, the light bumps off of my hand and goes in here. Now the key is with this line following robot is that you have a dark surface and a light surface and dark, as you hopefully know, is not as reflective as light surface. And so we have set this up so as this is mounted right here, that it is trying to find the left hand edge of a dark line. And we have it set up in the software so that it is constantly going to the right a little bit. And then when it detects that you're on the line, it goes back to the left a little bit. So we're going to be doing this all the way around. And it makes for a very jerky yet quite efficient way of doing things and very, very simple. We'll get into the code in a little bit and we're not even gonna have to get that much into the code because it is so very, very simple. So one of the key things that as you're following this tutorial and as always, I recommend that you go check out Sergey's written tutorial because he has so much more depth and he talks about the circuit setup and all that sort of stuff. But one of the things that I do want to talk about that Sergey struggled with and I struggled with and especially now that I'm in the studio with the lights, it's really thrown everything off, is that you have this little potentiometer here that changes the sensitivity of this. And it doesn't work great. Like it's really hard to get exactly the, um, the right setting. So anticipate you're gonna be tweaking with that a little bit and it's pretty obnoxious. So just full warning. But other than that, honestly, if you built this with the previous tutorial, this should be a very, very easy change to make. So let me uh, jump into the code really quick. And again, this is super simple. And so we'll jump into the code, talk about it, and then I'll show how this kind of works. Again, with the change in the lighting uh, that I had at home versus here, it's not been running great as I've been fiddling with it. So. In the code, as you can probably see, there's only 59 lines, so it's very, very straightforward. And you have the first couple of lines, as always, are just initializing things and setting things up. So you have lines one through 14 that are basically just the initialization. And then in 15, you get the loop. And you start that loop and it shows you have the checking to see if GP1 is low, which is the sensor above the line. I love how Sergey's commenting on all the codes. And depending on what happens, you're either moving left, um, which is what you typically do, or you move right. So this is all very, very self-explanatory. In lines 18 through 23, you set everything up so that you're gonna be going left. And then in 24 through 28, you set everything up so that you can go right. So as you can see, 29, you have control servo. And so that actually goes 
all the way down to line 48. And in this section, you are loading the values that you put in from lines 18 through 28 into the appropriate places and then controlling the servos. So it's something where you put in the value, you call the delay, which as you remember, the servos require a certain length of pulse for it to know exactly how quickly or which direction you're supposed to be going in with the continuous rotation servos. And then you have the pause in line 44 for the pulses. And then at the end 48, you jump back and you start this whole cycle over again. So 50 through 59, again, is just the, the delay, which we didn't want to use the timers this time. We just decided to go with a quick and dirty delay loop that we learned about, oh man, I think that was tutorial seven, I think. That was a long time ago, but that's it. That's it, we're done. It's, you, you go up to the top, you initialize, you check, hey, am I above the line or not? And then depending on whether or not you are, you decide whether you're gonna go to the left or the right, and then you control the servos, and that is it. It's a very, very simple code, very, very straightforward. Um, something where Sergey has in the past spent pages uh, describing the logic behind the code and saying what each command is. And I think on this, he spends like three paragraphs. And even then, it's not probably necessary. It should be pretty self-explanatory. So th that's it. From beginning, it, beginning to end, we've just gone over this entire thing. We just have the PIC 10 F200. We have our sensor, our servos that are controlled by, uh, by the input from the sensor, and then power, which here is just a little bit too excessive. But let's turn this on and see if we're gonna be lucky and how it looks. Okay, there we go. You can see it's going, and it's acting a little bit strange right now, giving me different readings. It's not sure if it wants to go forward or not. As I mentioned, this is a real pain to uh, get set up properly, but we do have the power on one side and then on the other side, it basically is saying whether or not it's getting a signal. Um, but because of the lights in here and everything, you just have to be so precise. And I don't know why it is such a pain, but it is a pain. But now you're seeing like on this one, this being the front, because in an ideal situation, this would be mounted right there. There you go you get this left track that is pretty consistent, and then you get this right track that, I, the way I've changed it, I had to change some of the settings a little bit from what Sergey had because, I don't know, I think my servo are just, have a different middle point for some reason. So this is pretty consistent on the left track, whereas on the right track you're getting a little bit more inconsistency as it's trying to decide whether it's going forward or not. And one of the joys is it's not only a light thing, but it's also a reflectivity thing, so if you have a kind of a sheen on your black surface is gonna reflect more than a matte surface like this right here. So this is pretty unique, and this is one of those things where Sergey actually didn't put any um, homework, as he likes to put it. He didn't put any homework on this one simply because he knew there was gonna be so much effort put into getting this dialed in exactly, as well as tweaking the values on this so that they would go forward as much as they were supposed to versus not too much. See. Okay, that's about it. That's it in action. And uh, frankly, it might seem a little bit jerky, but that's about as good as I would get is something that was pretty consistent on the one side and then jerking back and forth on the other side. So let me turn that off because that's quite noisy. All right, well, that was super exciting. So this very simple project shows how you can get this thing, which uh, I think I got it off of AliExpress for like a buck. You can probably get it uh, from SparkFun or Adafruit, one of those smaller companies that are focusing on making devices like this. You could probably get something that's maybe not quite as finicky for five or 10 bucks. So and pick your poison on that one. I'm kind of regretting not getting a nicer one that was a little bit easier to dial in. But hey, that's part of the adventure, right? As it is, we will be coming back and working on the ultrasonic sensor next time. I'm hoping that's gonna be a lot more straightforward in terms of refining it and things like that. But we have now created another robot that can follow a line and do so in a very, very small amount of code. And yeah, it might look kind of drunk as it's doing it, but it's quite effective at the same time. So hopefully that's enough to get you started and so you can do it and get your own going quite easily very little amount of money, and you can join us on the next one with the ultrasonic sensor. So hope you found this entertaining and helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and we will catch you on the next tutorial.